All right, before I get to my next guest, Mike Landry, I want to remind you about a few of our sponsors. First, be sure to check out our friends at the Ben Hogan Golf Equipment Company. And folks, if you haven't hit Ben Hogan Irons since maybe the 80s or the 90s, do yourself a favor and get a demo iron for either their Fort Worth PTX or new PTX, PTX Pro or even their Edge Irons. And take them out on the range and compare it to whatever it is you've got in your bag. All Ben Hogan irons and wedges are handcrafted one at a time in their Fort Worth, Texas factory. So no mass production, no shortcuts. Now you can order custom-made irons, wedges, and hybrids by going online to BenHoganGolf.com. And they're going to build those irons to your specifications. And best of all, charge you a fraction of the typical retail price. So check out their complete line of forged irons, wedges, utility irons, hybrids, bags, and accessories, and their new GS53 driver and fairway woods, which looks absolutely fantastic. Reading great reviews about both of those online. You can find out more information by going online to BenHoganGolf.com. I also want to give a shout out to one of our newer sponsors, the Sandestin Resort. Surrounded by white sandy beaches and the beautiful Gulf of Mexico, Sandestin Golf and Beach Resort offers three championship golf courses open to the public and one semi-private course. With recognition from leading golf magazines and reviewers around the world, each course provides an exciting challenge in a different scenic setting. Golfers can choose to play one or all of the courses, including Raven Golf Club, the Robert Trent Jones uh, Jr. layout that played host to the PGA Champions Tour back in 2006 and 2007. The Lynx Golf Club, designed by Tom Jackson, offers a winding layout against a backdrop of the Baytown Marina and the Chakawachi Bay. Baytown Golf Club, also designed by Tom Jackson, offers a fifth set of U.S. Kids Juniors tees. And Burnt Pine Golf Club, which is a semi-private Reese Jones design available only to registered Sandestin guests. Go online to sandestin.com forward slash tea time or give them a call at 844-887-SAND for more information and to book your tea times. And folks, this, this segment of the show is sponsored by our good friends over at the PGA Tour Superstore. This segment of the show is brought to you by the PGA Tour Superstore. See why golfers everywhere are proud to call PGA Tour Superstore their golf pro shop. Visit them online at PGATourSuperstore.com. Now back to Chris and more of the show. And now back with me here on the French Lick Resort guest line is Mike Landry. Mike is a PGA teaching professional at Mile Square Golf Course out in Fountain Valley, California, just outside of L.A. Mile Square is a 36-hole public course designed by David Ranville that opened back in 1969. Mike is also taught at the Marriott at Manhattan Beach. He studied at the University of Mary Harden Baylor in Belton, Texas. He's a PGA Class A teaching professional and has been so for over 25 years, and I'm very honored. He is back with me again tonight here on Next on the T. Hey, Mike, thanks for coming back on the show. Great to, great to be with you, Chris. Mike, I, I got to tell you, I, you know, I see your Mile Square Golf Club out there is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year. And it, like I've said, when you've joined me before, looks like an absolutely spectacular facility out there in L.A. Talk about the course and, uh, and what you guys have got going on to celebrate the 50th. Yeah, you know, it's a, uh, you got the classic course, which is, just like it sounds, tree-lined. Uh, we have the Players 18, which is modern golf with the bigger green complexes, some sneaky water. And then kind of here in the future, I believe 18 months or thereabouts, we'll be back to just 18 holes. So they're going to be just an eight. We'll be back to an 18-hole facility. Hmm, so that's okay. going to be, be kind of unique. But, again, that Players course has been here for uh I believe since 2001, if I'm not mistaken. But again, some of the land will go back to the county for the county use. And with the uh, the owners have an opportunity to kind of redo their lease and again, still be a very busy facility. Mike, I read on the course's website that uh, you guys have some of the finest greens in Southern California. What do you think sets the greens apart from other golf courses? You know, we have the undulation. You got very consistent speeds. Uh, like you mentioned, it's probably got some of the best practice putting greens in the whole Southern California area. You got, you know, three massive greens. So again, you have older folks that want to come out and do a little bit of putting. Uh, again, one's a little bit more shadier than the other. Uh, so it, it, it's definitely a unique situation. And then kind of with our 50th celebration, they had, I think, Monday, Tuesday, $50 green fees, including carts and a 50 anniversary cap. And then I think Wednesday, we got like 50 cent quarter pound dogs. Uh, and then we got like a 50 cent uh, range promotion day. So that'll kind of help out. 
but uh, good ownership and definitely a, a good structured facility. And Mike, to your point about uh, price, when I was looking at uh, the prices online, greens fees, there's a $39 Monday to Thursday, 53 on weekends uh, and, and holidays. And boy, I tell you what, when you think about the, a value for, for the area, I mean, I know for me, like you, you can't play anywhere in, in around Atlanta for 39 or 53 dollars regardless if it's monday through thursday or on the weekend we're right. paying 70 80 yeah, no. dollars easy out here that's a heck of a value in la isn't it yeah yeah and that's again walking again you get the ride as you're looking at the 54 and the 60 but still very good and then we have like a senior club to words monday through thursday 40 bucks a ride 42 on fridays but it's you know a very competitive price uh, it's run structured, as I mentioned. We have starters that time the turns and monitor the play instead of you know, you know, having any nightmares out there on the golf course. So we do, you know, really pay attention to the players. Mike, changing gears a little bit, I saw a recent post that another great friend of the show, Joe Groman, who is a PGA professional out there at the Navy Golf Course at Seal Beach there in Cypress, California. Joe posted some pictures from an event that you guys. We're both at uh, for kids with special needs. Talk about that event. Yeah, no, that's very good. It's, it's you know special ed kids, which is a great time for them to get out, get exposed to golf. Uh, again, with that, they they get that chance at hitting some balls, pitching, putting, and in worst case scenario, they have a great lunch. And again, you know, Joe was you know the, one of the instructors for Tiger Woods for many years. I think of his last. This last year, he's actually moved to uh, El Dorado Public Facility, which is part of the the Long Beach Golf uh, uh, complexes there in Long Beach, El Dorado. So, and he does, you know, the Wounded Warriors, and I think also he did the uh, with the Military Games. He's one of the coaches there. But again, I've helped him out down at Camp Pendleton where we do the uh, Military Days down there, and it's he runs a great show. Mike, I want to get some playing lessons from you uh, for our listeners. Plus, uh, I want to be a little selfish here and start off with me because, as I was saying to Tim Cusick in the last segment, I I'm typically an 80 to 85 shooter, but have a hard time getting over the hump of breaking 80. If I came to you as a new student and said, hey, Mike, I need your help. I need to break 80. How would you help me as a new student get to that milestone? First, is, you know, we're going to take a look at your iron setup, your wood setup. Uh, and then the other part of the lesson, we're going to ease over to the uh, the short game area, kind of assess that, and from there we got a plan. Uh, but you know, a lot of it is going to be the setup, uh, the body motion, so that you get the body motion going. So anything attached will go with it. You know, once the body you, you know changes pace, then things can get out of out of position. But yeah, definitely work on the setup and body motion. And Mike, you offer, speaking of short game, a, a short game master's program to help people with, you know, develop that piece and that part of the game. Talk about what that program is and some of the drills that you work on. Yeah, you know, a lot of it, you know, with the short game program just is to be able to, again, get that set up. Uh, with that set up, uh, you know, went to one of the education days with Seekman, who worked with Sevi Ballas, who learned a lot from Sevi Ballesteros. So, again, it relates to setup and the body motion. Uh, so, again, you know, having that short game, you know, program or membership that gives me an opportunity to get, you know, one-on-one -on -one with them. Uh, again, if we can get half a dozen in the program, then I can get them to play golf with each other. Uh, again, kind of support each other just like you would in your normal foursome type of situation. And, Mike, so many of us struggle slicing the ball off the tee. What, what is something that uh, our listeners can do, that, you know, whether it's with their grip or their setup or that sort of thing, to help us hit straighter drive so we're not uh, hunting around in the woods too much? Yeah. So, again, from the setup, uh, body motion, uh, again, being able to keep that core moving at any, at any you know, rate is going to be good. Uh, again, be able to do like a hands apart drill so that they're, you know, the forearms are crossing over. Uh, so that again, that club head's going to be in a position to where it's going to finish its movement instead of kind of thinking you're going to hang on and hit it down the line. Uh, you know, with that, you know, been able to do a lot of work with, 
juniors. So that's I've really done building in the junior area. So that's been kind of my success story lately and getting a good following there. Mike, looking back to when you first started playing, how much has technology changed? And can you see it in your own game? Are you hitting the ball as far, if not further, than you did 25 years ago? Yeah, you know, a lot of it is just still visual. I mean, when I started back, you know, when I was in the med section, we used Polaroid cameras. <laughs> but again, you got to have the visuals. And then from there, you're using the digital cameras now, tablets, uh, the launch monitors. But like anything, you have to know when to let people see it or be aware of it. So it's kind of like the great chefs, they feel the temperatures or get a feel for what's going on to where if they put the temperature gauge in there, <laughs> they got to be prepared for what's going to come out. <laughs> Are you seeing it in your own game? Are you hitting the ball further, better than you did 25 years ago? You know, it's I see it a lot in the, my driver and fairway woods, and then I'm about to uh, get a you know get some new Callaway irons, so I get, I got to go get some some game performance irons to really get back in the game. Uh, but again, I still go as aggressively as I did when I was younger. It's just the technology has got to help Mike out. <laughs> <laughs> and Mike, one of the things I talked about last week with Kelly Stenzel and Owen Brown is how their teaching and playing philosophies have changed over the years because they've changed and the things in the game have changed. When you think back to when you first started teaching, have your philosophies changed at all about how you teach the golf swing? You know, I, pretty much. I mean, I, I, I think I concentrate probably – 80% more on the pitching and short game. And again, more so that relates to the takeaway in a full swing, because if the takeaway is poor in a full swing, it's going to be poor in a short game. If it's textbook in a short game takeaway, it's going to be textbook in a full swing. Uh, and that's, that's huge in the short game and full swing setup. You have to be like, as I mentioned with the, you have to be behind the ball in full swing shots. Uh, transfer the weight and short game you're more vertical and then also favoring the target side and mike when you look at guys out on the on the pga tour now when you're watching like rory or dustin johnson brooks kepka bubba watson they're bombing the ball nearly 400 yards off the tee do you like that and see it as a natural progression of technology in the game? Or do you think, you know, boy, they're going to need to roll the golf ball back because before long we're going to need 9,000-yard golf courses the way the ball flies? You know, it's incredible because, you know, like you say, with the big guns out there, they're, they're athletes. <laughs> There's no question they're athletes. But, again, it all comes back to the short game or distance control from with their shorter irons. And we saw that with uh, Dustin Johnson, uh, Woodland, we see that with uh, Brooks, uh, Rory. But again, if they can clone in that, you know, nine on in, nine in on in, that there's it's a scary situation. And if they get the flat stick, like the kind of underdogs do, then it's it's a it's a game that'll it's going to change like we've seen from Tiger. And, Mike, for the average guy like me that can only really drive the ball, you know, 225, maybe 230 if it's downhill, downwind, I can get it out that far. Is there something that we can do to try to pick up an extra 10 or 20 yards off the tee? You know, I think it goes right back to the, you know, the stretching, the body motion, uh, the advantages we're getting with technology to where the, the drivers and hybrids and three woods, you're, you're able to adjust the needs to where – it can, if done correctly, it can be lower. If you're fading it, you can adjust it so it's straight, if not draw. So you, you have to get a good understanding of what you have equipment-wise and make sure that you're not going to be stuck in the same tool to where you can kind of upgrade it when needed. And, Mike, looking back over the years as a, as a teaching pro, what were some of the, the best tips that other pros, when you first started coming out and starting to, uh, you know, teach and get your, you know, your style and the things that you were wanting to and pass upon your students, were there some tips that some of the other pros that you might have worked with or around that shared with you that you have now passed on to your students? I, you know, I'm really oriented dr with drills because with drills, people can learn four things 
and only think about one. <laughs> so that makes my job easier because if they do one thing with a drill, I accomplish four things. Uh, again, you know, when it comes to teaching, I learned you know, probably 15 years ago, if not more, that I'm better off giving them a $2 molded training grip than move their hands around. Because if I can give them that $2 training grip, they can put their hands on it, treat it like a puzzle, kids treat it like a Lego that it fits, and not then have them try to recreate the hand position because <laughs> it doesn't function. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But yeah, it makes and really it kind of really way mandatory. Back. And Mike, kind of going all the way back, like, where, when was it that you decided, you know what, I want to teach this great game? Was there a moment in time where, where it really, you know, solidified for you that you know, really what I want to do with my life is be a, a golf instructor? You know, with college golf, I really enjoy playing college golf. Uh, again, being able to work with the different players I was on my team, which were, you know, good players, good ball strikers. I was able to learn quite a bit from them. And then when I got started as an assistant golf professional in Houston, you had to teach. I mean, you need that revenue source. <laughs> and that's, I think, <laughs> as the golf pros or any any college individual or anybody, you need more than one stream of income. <laughs> and we're in the era where we have to make our jobs better. So that's, again, where I've been able to, in Miles Square, I get the junior classes. I have 14 going now, six per class. So in a, a week, I see for 84 kids. So, again, that revenue source is fantastic for me. And then we have the blessing from the owner to be able to use their private area for junior classes only. So that's been a great benefit for me. Mike, before I let you go, let our listeners know, how can they follow you, stay up to date with what you're doing, whether it's online or it's on social media? Uh, the, the Coach Landry at, uh, yeah, Mike Mike Landry Golf. Yeah. You'll be able to go to uh, MikeLandryGolf.com, and I'm right there on the website. Uh, they can also go to, you know, MilesquareGolfCourse.com, go to the Academy section. I can be, you know, right there. Uh, hit me in Facebook. I'll be happy to follow you or, or again, keep a tune of what's going on. Uh, but, yeah, definitely available and uh, ready to help for those who have any, a passion for the game. Well, Mike, Thank you so much for taking time out of your uh, night to come back and be a part of the show. You've been a wonderful guest over the years, a wonderful supporter of the show. Can't thank you enough for all of that. I hope you'll come back and join me again real soon, my friend. I appreciate that, Chris. It was an honor to be on your show. I love, love to follow you. And, and again, I push it on my website to where it's an important feature in my newsletter as well, so that those who have passion for the golf game, as well as football, they can stay in touch with you. I appreciate that very much, Mike. That's very nice of you. It, it means a great deal to me. Take care, my okay. friend. We'll catch up again soon. Okay. Hey, thank you very much, Chris. You have a good evening. You too, Mike. That's Mike Landry. And again, you can uh, follow him on social media, and he's doing a lot of really good things out there in uh, in the L.A. area. And the golf course looks fantastic. Uh, it's, uh, it's sort of a link style, and you want to talk about an affordable place to play out in L.A., Think about $39 on Monday through Thursday or 53 on weekends and holidays. Boy, that's a great value. And then you also get the opportunity to spend some time with Mike, get a couple of playing lessons from him about the, the you know your full swing and uh, focus on the short game. It doesn't get much better than that. Go check him out online. Again, Mike Landry, you can find him all over uh, social media and particularly on uh, on Facebook. He's a great follow and a, uh, and a very good friend, and I appreciate him very, very much.